Hi guys, welcome back to another teardown video. Boy, have I got a treat for you today. Or more accurately, this was a treat sent to me by Joe, aka Ellipse from modelfkeyboards.com, who's working on a new round of beam spring keyboards. Yes, that's right, beam spring keyboards. I have done a video on beam springs before, it's the switch that IBM used in their keyboards before they moved onto the simpler, cheaper and more well-known buckling spring switch invented by the same person, Richard Hunter Harris. It seems weird to term buckling springs cheap considering the keyboards that they appeared in, but compared to beam springs, this was definitely the case. So to recap really quickly, the beam spring switch was this thing, which uses a so-called beam and fly spring interlock mechanism to operate. It consists of a little metallic plate spring riveted to a plastic slider, which locks into this fly spring and beneath that is held a little plate of a conductive plastic. This plate is what triggers actuation through the capacitive sense pads on the PCB below. This is a Keytronic capacitive PCB, I don't have an IBM one lying around, but it looks similar and works the same. When you push and pull the combination of the two, you get an inversion of the spring, which causes it to retract and extend the legs of the beam spring, which is what causes the switch to toggle between off and on. Interestingly, the switch works opposite from buckling springs. The plate is down by default and pulled up when actuated. With buckling springs, it's the reverse. The inversion also yields tactility and a clicky noise. And as a bonus, it's one of the very, very few switch designs that have actuation and clicky noise inherently matched up perfectly. Some other examples are buckling springs, razor clicky optoelectric, AT&T magnetic separation, Markward butterfly, and mouse trap switches, and I may be forgetting one or two, but that's really about it. I'm going to refrain from saying why these are so amazing, because frankly I could be here all day and what goes into making all of this, but suffice it to say that remaking these switches, let alone keyboards for them, is no small feat. And so it's really cool to see that Joe has adapted these beam spring switches into a more modern package. The main two things that have been changed are the height and the keycap mount. The new switches are considerably smaller than the older beam springs, but still quite tall, a bit over twice as tall as MX type switches from base to top of stem, and they now come with MX compatible keycap mounts. I can already reveal that they feel a bit different as well, although I'm going to leave the verdict until the actual review. In any case, other than the height and keycap mount, they're actually remarkably similar. The slider is different and the housing is shorter, about as short as I think you can get away with while still allowing the mechanism to work, I think, and it uses a round metal washer at the top rather than the mount insert that the original used. But it's really surprising to me how close this is to the originals. Even the housing inside and outside is almost exactly the same. It uses a rubber o-ring as a dampener too, just like the IBM version. I should note that this is the version 1 of what the switch looks like. The second round of boards is going to have a slightly different switch in it, which I'll cover later down the line. In any case, I can't wait to try these out in a keyboard. Overall, the switch is kind of medium complex, with a total of 8 parts, exactly the same as IBM beam springs. Housing, slider, beam spring, fly spring, fly plate, o-ring, retention washer and coil spring. That's it for this teardown video, and see you next time guys.